very tiny. Ooh, lemony and spicy. Oh, kind of delicious, actually. I would not believe that this thing is uh, vegan. And honestly, for a meal that's like so simple and so frugal, to be honest. Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Shay, and we're the International. Today we're cooking Egyptian food. I will be preparing an Egyptian dish named koshari. Koshari is a rice and lentil dish that's topped with like a spicy sauce and fried onions. And I'm going to be cooking ful mudamas, which is a fava bean dish. It's not normally eaten for dinner. It's usually a breakfast or lunch thing, but it's so quintessential to Egyptian cuisine that we had to include it in this episode. At the International, we're always trying to bring you different kinds of food. So I'm happy to announce that this is our first ever vegan episode. If you want to see more vegan or vegetarian dishes, let us know in the comments below. Let's get started. We've never cooked a lot of Egyptian food before, so this was always going to be an exciting one. Koshari. From what I understand, koshari was a dish that probably originated somewhere in India, and it's based on the Indian dish khichdi. But uh, this was brought to Egypt by the British and also has influences of like Italian food, kind of like pasta sauce that kind of tops this rice and lentil dish. I cannot wait to try and make some. So I have about four cups of water that's boiling over here. As you can see, everything's getting super steamy. I'll confess, I mean, I don't really cook a lot of like vegetarian or vegan food. When I was looking for this, they just said like brown lentils. Now what does brown lentils mean? So these are just like whole brown lentils. I actually grew up eating these, except I did not know that masoor dal is brown lentils. We just soaked this in water like about 30 minutes ago and then I just kind of like rinsed it out. Yeah, looks like the water is boiling and I'm just gonna put this one cup of brown lentils and I'm just gonna boil this for about 15 minutes. I'll just put this on the back burner and get the rest of the elements ready. The idea is not to cook this lentil like completely. You're only like par cooking it. Then you combine it with the rice and then you allow it to finish cooking. I like kind of salting in stages. So I'm just gonna put like two small pinches of salt in there just for some extra flavor. Okay, I'll let this boil for 15 minutes. So as you can see, I have moved the uh, lentils to my back burner, quite literally. So I've got about three tablespoons of oil heating here and I'm gonna fry up some onions for my tomato sauce. Most of this dish is quite simply spiced. So this sauce is where all the flavor is coming in. So make sure you pay special attention to the sauce and it be real tasty, real tasty. Mm -hmm. So this was like one small onion. We just diced it up kind of coarse because uh, I'm gonna blend it. I'm just gonna saute this for like about five, 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes have elapsed and our onions are nice and soft. As you can see, it's not fully cooked or even browned, but it's kind of translucent. This is a good time for us to add four cloves of garlic that we've just kind of like smushed. It's not ground or minced or anything. We're going to blend it all up. Stir it for about 30 seconds. One teaspoon of cumin. It's actually a little bit more, one and a half. Feel free to use less. Don't. One and a half teaspoons of red chili flakes. So fragrant. Like I said, you guys, most of the other ingredients are like a little simply spiced. So the sauce is cake. Now I'm going to add one can of diced tomatoes to get all the juices in there. And I'll just let it cook for about five more minutes, after which we will blend up our sauce. So our sauce is boiling and I smack a taste. It's actually quite tasty. It's almost kind of reminiscent of an Italian pasta sauce. I'm just gonna blend this with my immersion blender. If you do not have an immersion blender, you can always, you know, pour it into a food processor or just start with like a canned uh, tomato sauce. After all, you're the boss of your own sauce. All right, Chef John. So as you can see, the sauce is pretty saucy. We actually started blending it up on the stove top, but the splatter taught me real quick that that's not a good idea. So I took it off of the heat and I suggest you do too. I'll just go ahead and keep this on simmer until it's time for us to eat. So I have taken the lentils off of the heat. It's actually fairly soft. So I'm just gonna add it towards the 
end so that it finishes cooking with the rice. And uh, just a reminder, my sauce is uh, still simmering. Let's make the rest of the two components of the dish. So I have some water boiling in front of me. I'm just gonna cook like one and a half cups of basmati rice. So this basmati rice I have been soaking for like about 30 minutes. I have drained the water and rinsed out all of the starch. This is about two and a half cups of water. So the rice will start cooking. And once it's almost cooked, I'm just gonna add the lentils in there. And in the meantime, I'm also gonna start boiling some uh, macaroni on the back burner. Two cups of pasta. The only kind of like inconvenient thing about koshari is that I don't have enough containers. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pour uh, the sauce into uh, like a glass bowl for now and then use this container for the rest of the fried onions. So our rice is almost 100% cooked. I think it'll just cook for about five more minutes. I'm just gonna cook the rest of these par cooked lentils along with the rice. Give this a little stir and go fry my onions. The fried onions. This might seem a little bit counterintuitive. I just learned this today actually. The trick to get perfect fried onions is to apparently boil it first. So as you can see, I've got like a decent amount of water boiling and this is like two medium sized onions. So we've just cut these lengthwise and I'm just gonna boil this real quick. Okay, so our onions were boiled and I pulled them out of the water and then uh, dried them in a paper top. The oil's hot and we're gonna deep fry these onions. I usually just, uh, you know, buy my fried onions, like in a bag. But the reason I'm frying this today is because uh, this oil right here is supposed to be like a flavor bomb. And we're gonna use some of this oil to uh, flavor our rice. All right, we're gonna get started with the full mudamas. So I'm going to add one 19 ounce can of fava beans into this can which has been heating over medium high heat. I'll add a little bit of water. This is only about a quarter cup just to keep it from burning because I didn't use any oil here. I just kind of put these in. Compared to the kashari, this is gonna be quite easy, you guys. This is one green Thai chili that I've minced up really finely. And I'm gonna pour it into this lemon juice and garlic. This is one large garlic clove that I've minced really finely, putting it into the lemon juice as well. And this is one teaspoon of cumin powder. So before I add the lemon juice mixture, I'm going to mash some of these. I'm not gonna mash all of them because we kind of want some texture in there, but we're gonna mash some. We're not gonna be eating this with any liver or a nice Chianti though. I'm adding the lemon juice, Thai red chili garlic mixture in. My spoon is too big. Stir it around. And believe it or not, guys, it's pretty much done. We just add tomato on top, maybe garnish with some parsley, and that's it. So excited about Egyptian food. I'm super into the full mudamas. I actually uh, snuck a couple of bites. It's like super tangy and mm -hmm. really tasty. Another one. Yeah, it's really spicy too. Just that one little chili. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's like a very hearty breakfast dish and I'm sure that this gives you like so much energy that it lasts the entire day. Yeah. And this dish is a delightful carb heaven. If you're ever missing pasta and if you're ever missing khichdi, this is the right time to eat them both. This is a really tasty dish, you guys. I mean, the combination sounds like it wouldn't work, but honestly, it does. Big bite. Mmm. Oh, no. <laughs> Mm, it's really good. If you're making this, I recommend making a salad on the side. Mm -hmm. so you can get your greens in, guys, because this is just really carb heavy, really tasty. You'll be full all day. I'm sure of it. We're gonna finish eating this and see you next week. Too many finger guns. Bam, bam, bam! <laughs>